it's a pleasure and an honor to uh, uh, present the progress up to now of uh, a Riyadh metro project. A bit of a correction though, I've been with ADA a little bit over 20 years, so I'm not that old yet. So uh, today we'll be talking a little bit about uh, the progress. Uh, we'll talk uh, about uh, the vision of the project and how we, are, how we got to where we are today. So instead of doing it chronologically, we're going to flip it over a little bit. And I will, uh, since I can't take you to the project, I'll bring the project to you here. So we have a clip of about uh, 10 minutes, which showcases the progress uh, up to uh, January. Uh, I apologize if you see any shaking in the images uh, or a little bit of jerkiness, but uh, essentially that was due to uh, trying to shorten the film in the uh, allotted time. When we originally cut the film, it was about over 90 minutes. So we knew that that's not going to work. So we cut it down uh, further. It still was too long, so we had to speed up the footage. And that's why you're going to see things in, in, uh, in fast motion. So I'll leave you with the film, and I'll join you after the film is finished. I hope that gave you a little bit of a, uh, some info about the progress. It's actually, as you might know, one of the biggest projects in the world now. And it's rather difficult to capture everything in one short clip. But uh, let's go back to the vision. And what was the vision behind this, uh, this project? Uh, let's see. Let's hope so so uh, Riyadh, as you might know, is one of the fastest growing cities in the world. Uh, it's doubled. The, it's more than doubled, actually, since uh, 1990. Uh, the population in 2012 was about uh, 5.7. Now we're at 6 million, and we expect to be at about 8.3 million by 2030. Uh, it's it's a city which is heavily dependent on uh, vehicles or car uh, car transportation. Uh, traffic congestion now is uh, very high and very frustrating and uh, there had to be a solution. In 2002, a Riyadh Development Authority actually uh, conducted the uh, master plan for the development of the city and one of the uh, main points of the, uh, of the strategy was to have a public transport system uh, for, for the city. The Real Development Authority began planning the system and, uh, of course, the design 
immediately after the uh, study was finished. Uh, the Council of Ministers approved the project in 2012 and immediately uh, ADA started working on the project. And the approval was to complete all of the phases, although the original plan was foreseen as phasing of the, of the project, the uh, six metro lines, the bus system. However, the, the instruction was to complete all of the project within a period of five years. Uh, the delivery, of course, is, is very challenging. It's a unique project. We're dealing with a uh, an existing city, existing infrastructure, and the scope of the project uh, affected all parts of the city. Uh, so delivering this project, uh, ADA realized was going to be an extreme challenge. Uh, and one of the goals, of course, was to minimize the disruption to the city during all of this. Uh, also, gaining the support of the public, which is very important to, uh, to, to keep the project going and to, uh, to entice people to ride it once it's finished. So the uh, program actually in, uh, in ADA is composed of many, many uh, aspects. We have the design build of the Riyadh Metro project, which is our subject today, and that's this area here. We have the O&M of the Riyadh Metro project, of course, which is also actually ongoing now. We have the infrastructure of the Riyadh bus project. We have the operation and maintenance of the bus project and the supporting studies. However, our, our presentation today is purely about the Riyadh Metro. So what is the Riyadh Metro project? It, very quickly, it's six lines, 176 kilometers, 85 stations. The, uh, it covers the majority of the densely populated areas. It covers commercial areas, educational, and health, uh, health institutions. It's linked to King Khalid International Airport, King Abdullah Financial District, the center of the city, and also the major universities in town. It's the backbone of the uh, public transport system, uh, which also depends on the bus system. Uh, and it, it is integrated, of course, in terms of having sometimes common stations and common ticketing and uh, so the first line is the blue line 38 kilometers 26 stations from east to west of the uh, from north to south line two the red line is 25 kilometers 16 stations line three orange line is 41 kilometers with 21 stations yellow line line four is 30 kilometers nine stations and the green line is 13 kilometers with 12 stations the purple line is 30 kilometers with 11 stations. The main components of the project, of course, are the tunnels, which uh, you have seen in the video. Of course, in the video it says 13 kilometers, but up to now, uh, as of uh, last week, we've actually achieved uh, a little bit over 18 kilometers of tunneling. Uh, so it's about 40% of the city, of the, of the length. We're tunneling with seven TBMs. Uh, six are from Heron Connect, who are, I see are uh, represented here, and one is from NFM. They're 10 meters diameter. Uh, also, we have the viaducts or bridges, and uh, they're a big portion of the project also, about 84 kilometers, and uh, about 50%. The average span is... is So as a vision, it was 30 meters, but when we got to the design and the details, we've increased it to 36, 36 meters as an average span. And of course, it's, the bridges are constructed by different methodologies. As you might have picked up from the film, we have uh, very little cast in place sections on the bridges, it's mostly segmental method or full span method or the uh, full beam method. We have the at-grade sections which are the, uh, the shortest uh, or the smallest portion, about 19 kilometers, about 11%. So the technology uh, will be all uh, driverless trains with an OCC for each line, so each line operates independently of the, of the other lines. Uh, also, uh, there is a TCC or Transportation Control Center which actually monitors the whole network and uh, also controls the bus system. Uh, the rolling stock is supplied by three suppliers, Siemens, Bombardier, and Alstom, each one working with 
uh, one of the consortium, which we'll uh, explain a little bit later. Uh, all trains, ADA actually was uh, particular about this point into having, although they're from three different suppliers, to have uh, a generally common visual appearance. Uh, there, of course, uh, we have three sections, first class, family, and uh, single section. There will be uh, data services on the, net, on the uh, trains. There is uh, handicap uh, accessibility to the trains and places for the handicap. We're about 200 trains, 260 passengers per train. Most of the trains are uh, two, two, via, two, uh, two carriage trains, but on line one, there are four. So the color will be uh, based on the line of the colors. Uh, we have park and ride facilities also to allow uh, passengers to drive up to the park and ride and of course use the system. The park and rides will have uh, uh, data systems in there to allow uh, the management of the parking and it will be of course ticketed with the, uh, with the uh, train system. There, uh, there will be some uh, commercial space also in the uh, park and ride. Uh, seven depots uh, ranging from 60 to 150,000 square meters. Of course, these depots uh, uh, house the operation and control centers and maintenance facilities and offices for the operators. Uh, safety and security is of course important on such a big project with CCTV cameras, fire alarm systems, firefighting, and uh, real-time communication between the trains and the uh, OCCs. Uh, an important part of the project is the power to the system and so we have 12 power grid stations that are being built now actually as part of, of the project. Uh, it's composed of four new main grid stations, which you have seen, I think you've noticed on the film. Uh, it, imply, it also includes upgrading eight existing uh, stations, and the total uh, demand is about 470 megavolt amperes. And uh, it's nice to say that actually the power, we expect to have power on at the end of this year. Uh, so that's actually moving w very well. The uh, important part of the project also is the urban enhancement, uh, enhancing the corridor along the metro lines. And in ADA, we see this as one of the main, uh, main features of the system, to, uh, to simplify and to, uh, uh, to have, it, have it inviting for the passengers to walk to the nearest station and, and uh, make the uh, system overall more friendly or easier to use. So we expect uh, the ridership or the capacity of the system is 1.2 million passengers per day at startup, and ultimately uh, the capacity will be 3.6 million per day. So the project duration is uh, overall 60 months. Uh, so that's a very brief uh, look at the vision. So how did we get to where we are today? Uh, actually, on uh, in the middle of 2013. Uh, the letters of award were issued to uh, a consortium that had already been pre-qualified uh, in an international pre-qualification. Uh, so the individual companies of the consortium were pre-qualified and the teams were made up of uh, internationally experienced companies in this kind of work. Uh, and the notice to proceed was actually at the end of uh, October uh, 2013. So we're basically a little bit over two years now, two and a half years. So the first package, which is lines one and two, is being uh, executed by BAX, uh, which is uh, led by uh, Bechtel Corporation from the US. The system provider is Siemens, and in conjunction with two uh, local companies from uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, one from Al Mabani and CCC out of uh, Greece, I think. Uh, package two is uh, a and Riyadh New Mobility, and they're led by Selenium and Pergilio from Italy. Uh, the system providers are Ansaldo and Bombardier, and of course they have uh, other consortium members in the... In, in, in the uh, package 3 is FAST, led by FCC, and the system provider is Alstom, again with a number of companies, each having a specialty in a certain aspect of the work. Uh, supervision or construction man project management and construction management by two uh, 
uh, let's say, uh, consortia again, uh, RMTC, uh, composed of, led by Parsons and com uh, composed of Sistra and Aegis. Uh, RAMPT, which is uh, made up of Lewis Berger and Hill International. Uh, an important thing of what ADA is doing actually to get the project on track and keep it on track is involvement of uh, everybody in the project. And we had the groundbreaking ceremony in April of 2014. Uh, and the groundbreaking was by the governor of Riyadh. Uh, we have regular follow-up meetings uh, by the governor. He visits the site. We have uh, meetings on a regular basis just to make sure that everything is going well and that no problems. And that's been very important for us in getting other stakeholders to be in line with the project. Uh, one of the main risks that we uh, had anticipated in the beginning was utility diversion. And so uh, we uh, formed a group of, uh, we called them utility work group. And these are composed of members of all of the utility companies in the, in the city in addition to some government organizations like the municipality and the uh, Ministry of Transportation. And this team is actually uh, working with the project in the same offices to help the DBs or the uh, design build contractors into uh, collecting data about the existing utilities, about approving the diversion uh, schemes, and to uh, uh, simplify any other issues that might come about. And uh, in ADA, we've assigned somebody to lead that effort. Uh, he's actually with us here today. Uh, uh, also, we have the traffic management and road diversions. This is also a very important point. It's, and it's one of the main, uh, you might say, frustrations of uh, any uh, city is the traffic diversions along it with uh, any construction. Uh, not to mention a project of this scale where we're actually working now, as you've seen in the film, over 180 sites in the city or around the city. So the traffic management was uh, given uh, high importance. Uh, the DBs actually uh, modeled the traffic of the uh, corridor along which their uh, uh, lines are. Uh, they did some modeling of the traffic, uh, uh, traffic numbers, traffic counts and uh, modeled how the construction methodology would affect the traffic flow around the work sites. Uh, so all of the DBs uh, did that. Then it was combined into one big model uh, of the city, which ADA had done, and uh, the, uh, the final detours were, were actually determined based on this model. After fine tuning and tweaking, we realized that we can never eliminate the, uh, the, the impact, but it was, the goal was to minimize it. And it's good to say that we've actually, I think, succeeded because uh, we see some good uh, results and we hear that uh, in some areas the detours are actually better than the original condition. Uh, part of the, uh, uh, of the traffic uh, detours was to actually develop a, uh, uh, an application or an, a mobile app to guide people through the detours. So this app was developed by ADA and uh, all of the detours, as they come online, are entered in the app, and it has, uh, of course, traffic flows, and it will guide the, uh, the driver to uh, the required location based on the existing condition of the streets. Now, one of the uh, main uh, points, as I mentioned earlier, was getting the public on board with, with this project, and ADA actually uh, formed a team uh, the sole purpose of that team was to make sure that the public uh, was aware of the project, was aware of the progress, of course, aware of the detours, which are more important, most important, and to receive and to action any comments or, uh, that the public might have. And we've established, actually, uh, we've done that in a number of ways. Uh, one is to have face-to-face -face interaction with members of the public particularly along the detours. Before implementing any detour, we have a team that goes out, visits the homes of the uh, people along the detour, visits the businesses along the detour, explains the detours, hands out brochures, explaining the detour, and uh, giving people some time to uh, give comments on that prior to implementing the detour. Uh, so by any standard, I think, uh, this project is a very large and difficult project. 
And I think, uh, I hope you've appreciated how big the project is. It's about $28 billion and we're moving very well uh, in terms of progress. Uh, like I said, we, we have now seven TBMs uh, working in the city. We have, I think, 15 launching girders installing uh, viaducts. The outgrade sections are ongoing. We're working now into over 60 stations. Uh, the depots are all being constructed, as you have seen in the film. And so pretty much the project is on track. Uh, there's still a lot of challenges remaining. And uh, I think the teams working on the project, we have excellent teams, the DBs, the PMTMs, uh, the stakeholders have all been uh, very proactive and, and helpful in this project. And therefore, we are, uh, we're, and I think we're, we're on schedule and we're making excellent progress. Uh, also, we've, I think the uh, public relations strategy has been very successful. A lot of people are now excited about the project. Uh, we have people anxious, always asking of where the project is and uh, looking forward to riding uh, on the trains. Thank you very much, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank, thank you very much, thank Alwaleed. <clears throat> Before I open the questions up to the floor, I'd just like to ask you one question. I mean, knowing Riyadh myself, having worked there, and six million uh, uh, population. I know the road infrastructure, I know the challenges, but I, I am assuming one of your biggest challenges has been the logistics in especially looking at the size of some of your uh, precast beams mm. and the logistics about developing this fantastic project in a live city. Mm -hmm. um, how have you uh, uh, approached those challenges? That's actually a very important question and it, it, it's key to the pro where we are in terms of progress. Uh, one of the things that uh, the contractors actually uh, did at the outset was to uh, create their own uh, precasting facilities. Uh, and as you have seen in the film, as, as actually it's on the screen now, uh, we have, I think, about uh, seven precast factories in the city. Uh, this is not uh, the batching blends, but the factory, the precast, solely dedicated for the project. Uh, in addition to one factory in the eastern province. But these factories are an important part of the progress of where we are now. Now getting all of this equipment, the uh, precasting facilities, the, uh, the land to use, this, uh, to use or to uh, construct these facilities, the uh, getting all of this equipment uh, on shore, actually ADA also assisted in terms of uh, customs and trying to clear all of this uh, all of this equipment as quickly as possible so I think uh, this team spirit on the project where we have the DBs the, the the PMCMs and the client the owner ADA working as one team has actually allowed all of this logistics to be uh, handled in a proper way also getting the equipment around town and and uh, special permits for traffic the traffic police have been actually very helpful on this so it's been a very successful team effort, I think. Thank you very much. Uh, can we open the questions out to the floor? We've got time for one or two questions. Gentleman over here. Yes, hello. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. I just have uh, basically two questions. One of them is, uh, when will be the, the completion date of Riyadh Metro? as it will have delays. And the second one is how we are going to face the challenge of making Riyadh uh, a city where we can walk. I think it's another challenge we have in Metro Riyadh to make the, the walkaways and the paths for people to walk to take the Metro. I'm sorry, I didn't get the last part. The last part is how you are going to face the challenge to make Riyadh a city where you can walk. Oh, yes. Because you cannot walk really when you are in Riyadh. Yes. So uh, in terms of progress, uh, uh, we are now at 29% uh, progress and we expect actually uh, this has been the first or the slow 29% because of all of the logistics that had to be set up, all of the preparations, the design works, all of that. But now uh, everything is ongoing in terms of construction. We expect excellent progress in the coming years. So except for some uh, unforeseen conditions, I think the project team is confident that we will get there, inshallah. As far as walking, 
uh, like I mentioned, the urbanscape along the corridors of the, uh, of the project uh, was given a special importance for that particular reason of, of having uh, the stations easily accessible to pedestrians and walking. And, uh, so that is an important part of the project. Of course, this time is coming where uh, it will be actually done, but we are looking at the designs now of the, of the, uh, of the urbanscape along the corridor of the metro. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last question. We have a gentleman at the end here. Hello. Uh, in which approach uh, EDA, ADA is planning to encourage the public to travel through the metro? As we are in a culture where a majority of people tend to drive their private cars, uh, even if they are, uh, if their destination within a walking distance. Thank uh, you. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get the first part, but I think yeah. your question is, what is ADA going to do to make encourage. sure, uh, to encourage ridership? Yes. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned in part of the presentation, the program actually is composed of uh, uh, studies uh, component, where actually ADA is doing uh, a study of uh, how to encourage ridership. So there will be some uh, measures taken that will actually uh, help in this. Uh, things like, uh, uh, you know, one of the things is the urbanscape, as we as we have mentioned. The other thing is uh, allowing or having park and ride facilities. Uh, we've already actually started on other issues, and I, I mentioned the public relations. But one of the things that we have done was to involve children in the project in order to get the mindset of children ready for the public transport uh, system. Uh, we've gotten the public involved also in terms of naming of the TBMs. We had a competition to name the TBMs when, uh, before operation where we had actually about 60,000 participants. Uh, there are studies about uh, ticket prices, fuel prices, all of those are being considered now to uh, see how ridership can be uh, encouraged. Uh, although we're confident that uh, it, will be, uh, uh, it will be surprising how many people ride it, I think. Thank you, Al-Walid. Thank, uh, thank you for a fantastic presentation and insight into how you're dealing with this major project in Riyadh. Thank you. Thank you very Ladies much. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.